I think there's so much scope with this still, you know, and, and people aren't really scratching the surface yet with designing for additive. That's a big, big area that people are starting to look at, you know, so it's taking a, an actual part and redesigning it for the process, you know, really, really utilising it to its advantages there in that instance. <laughs> We've travelled to the Car Fulham Group and we're really trying to find out today where Stratuses are with 3D printing and the future because honestly it's blown my mind this has, Rob, what you're capable of producing now. That's it. I think, you know, Stratasys have come a long way in terms of what our offerings uh, include now. We've got five different technologies um, that, we, that we talk about. Uh, the parts that we've got in front of us here are specifically from the Polyjet technology. And so you'll see a lot of colour parts, as you can see here, assemblies that we've created, um, rubber parts and over-moulded components. There's just such a broad range you can achieve with the Polyjet technology. We will look through all of these and I'll just ask you a few questions on these. But who, who is really, where are we with 3D printing? Because it was something that we talked about in the future. You can have, obviously, people can have 3D printers in their homes, but what you're, you're the kind of industrial professional end of the marketplace. So who is buying these machines? It's a multitude of companies, everything from a one-man band all the, th all the way through to your OEMs. And I think, you know, it comes down to the application that the person's got, depending on what they're doing, you know, from everything from design through to production, we, we do have a solution to fit. Um, that throws up its own challenges, of course, because, cool. you know, where do I sit in the range there? There's, there's printers out in the market for £500 and there's printers out there for half a million pounds, you know. So I think that's where we come in. We, we uh, pride ourselves on a consultancy. Um, we can help people to understand um, how we can um, fit one of the technologies to, to the application and then within that range of technology that we've got, as I say, under the five banners, we can pick the right solution as well to, to fit. I mean, you've been talking about making parts for the Airbus, you know, A350, we've been talking about making jigs and fixtures in the metal cutting industry. Like, where does it end and where does it begin? I think there's, yeah, there's so much scope with this still, you know, and, and people aren't really scratching the surface yet with designing for additive. That's a big, big area that people are starting to look at, you know, so it's taking a, an actual part and redesigning it for the process, you know, really, really utilising it to its advantages there in that instance. We, we often go out to a lot of companies and it's all subtractive machining, and now this is additive and it's growing a lot. Are people, what are people's reservations on the materials? I think that's the case, you know, again, depending on the sector you, you, you're talking to at the, at the time. If, if it's in design, a lot of people are used to getting prototypes made. They're used to getting 3D printed parts made by a service bureau and things like that. And that's where we'd maybe be looking at a technology like Polyjet there to satisfy that requirement. You know, you'll be saving money by producing the parts in-house. You've got a range of different materials you can do that. When it comes to the more engineering sort of end of the spectrum, where people are a little bit more dubious about 3D printing in some instances, they sometimes think that they've got to be at the sort of uh, end of the the spectrum where they're printing end use parts it doesn't need to be that it can be shop floor aids it can be jigs and fixtures it can be cmm fixtures um, soft jaws for their machine mm. tool and actually be an additional um, asset to the business on the shop floor rather than something that you're going to actually sell the parts off and it, a lot of your printers are, are literally for the shop floor it's not to have in a separate room or anything like that it's literally you can put this on next to my machine tool and be saving your time, even on the um, metrology side of things as well. Absolutely, yeah. All of our machines very easily um, operated and can be put on the shop floor alongside a you know a machine tool um, or even you know in the office in some instances. You know, yeah. we've got to say such a broad range. It depends on the it depends on what people's setup is. I just want to quickly cover <coughs> some of these because these are just this will really kind of float your boat and excite you. Here, I can't push this. This is a really solid uh, material. The same material though isn't it? That's it yeah all acrylic based. And then this one here you can see how soft they are. Here you've got different finishes marble, woods, here you've got a finish of kind of like something like you'd get in your car, a leather finish, you've got a material that actually spins around, I can't do that with my hand but that literally spins and that's printed yeah. in one. That's right. So I mean, you know, one of the one of the things that we can do is we can use the support material to support any gaps in the part. We can wash that away with water. Um, we have a water soluble support material now for this range of technology here, which just allows you to put the part into into fresh water and it just dissolves that support away, giving you moving parts like that. So what would you say to anyone then? You know, I know uh, uh, SYSL Stratasys solely Stratasys machines. What would you say if someone was having reservations or thought, could I? maybe look into the world of 3D printing. I mean, look, this banana, 
this banana itself, like everything on this table pretty much, has been 3D printed. It's incredible. That's right. I, th I think I think at the moment what I'd say to people is just, just come to us, challenge us, have a chat with us about the application that you, you, you're thinking about. And it don't have to be a full colour application. No. It can be something, as I say, on the shop floor where you're thinking, I've got a bottleneck here with um, metrology um, or assembly fixtures, things like that. And there may be a technology that we've got that can fit. And I think, you know, that's where we can really help people out. Thank you.